This is a fairly intimidating audience because it is constituted by many of my colleagues, my peers, my mentors, and so um, hopefully we can all engage and get something out of the discussion this morning. So the title of my talk today is Working Together as a Community, Creating Our Collective Impact. And to me, there are three separate notions embodied in that in that sentence, the first is community. So where we are, what's our unique place on the planet? The second is collective, who are we? And then the third is impact, where do we wanna be? What do we wanna do? What do we want ourselves to look like? So I wanted to just ask and just shout it out, but if you had to think of three words to describe where we live, just throw out some words, I'm curious. Cold, beautiful. Diverse. Pacific. Oh. Pacific. I like that. Friendly. Isolated. North. North and hub. Great. Now those are fabulous words. What about who we are? Friendly. Friendly. <laughs> A good audience. <laughs> what else? Resilient. Resilient. Excellent word. One of my favorite words of the day, of Elaborate. the week. Elaborate. Diverse. Prosperous. Prosperous. Alaska, independent. It's easy, huh? It flows off the tongue because we actually spend a lot of time thinking about who we are. We have a lot of pride in who we are. And I think that we're all actually too in fair amount of agreement about who we are. But then we're gonna talk today a little bit about what we want our collective impact to be. And there's a vision piece of that notion, right? There's a, well, here we are, this is where, this is who, but then what do we want to look like in the future? Are we satisfied right now? Or are we gonna to come together and work together to create a collective impact that improves the lives of Alaskans and the lives of Anchorage in particular, which is more recently my focus. So where we live. This is a picture that was taken from my friend's backyard the other night. It is incredible to think about the beauty of our state and the unique beauty of our state. And we know that we're huge, right? Everybody's seen that picture, where the, um, the city of Anchorage is the size of Delaware, uh, the state is the size of Spain, France, Germany, and Great Britain combined. We know that we sit atop incredible storehouses of power and of energy. We've got incredible resource wealth at our fingertips. And also, we've got incredible beauty that's a half an hour away. What's that phrase? We, you know, we're lucky because we live a half an hour away from Alaska. Very true, and we all take advantage of those unique attributes to some degree. And then we think about who we are. And these quotes really appealed to me. I was looking for quotes about cities, and I really like the first one. Um, and I think that it's really relevant for Anchorage as Alaska's largest village and as a place that people who wander eventually come and find themselves at home. And I know that I've been very blessed as a, coming from a wandering culture and a wandering community, to be able to be so welcomed in this beautiful city has been just such an honor. And then the second quote really talks about the fact that, again, this visionary notion, this idea that we want to have some sort of forward motion we want to keep working at creating Anchorage as a welcoming community. We know that we have incredible resources to draw upon based on our diversity. Diversity was shouted out both in terms of where we live but also who we are as an attribute. We've all seen these statistics, but let's just go over them again. 100 different languages in our school. We have the most ethnically diverse schools in the country. I think of the top elementary, we're like 19 of the 20, top 20 most ethnically diverse elementary schools, four out of five of the top high schools, and I forget the middle school number, um, but just incredible diversity and richness in our school system. We are also not only Alaska's biggest village, but we have the highest percentage of Alaska Natives and American Indians per, uh, per capita than any other city in our country which is again another point of not only pride, but of identity. We take great um, pride in identifying ourselves with uh, Alaska Native um, peoples and the histories and the traditions uh, that those communities bring to our identity. 
9% of Anchorage residents are foreign born. 10% of small businesses in Anchorage are, for, are owned by foreign born people. So immigrants and refugees make incredible economic contributions to our cities. And in fact, at the city, we're starting to try to figure out how we can capture that data and that information so that we can more fully understand the contributions that that particular community makes to who we are as Alaskans. The, dem the demographics of our city are changing rapidly. 12% of our workforce is foreign born. And the foreign born population is not just coming to Alaska and then leaving rapidly. People are here and they're here to stay. Nearly 40% of people who are foreign born have been in Alaska for over 20 years. That's an incredible statistic. When you look at that juxtaposed against the transients of our typical population, and we rank fourth in the nation for the number of people that are becoming naturalized citizens. So that's also something that really sticks, uh, speaks to the sticking power and the staying power of our city. But it's not all equal and rosy for everybody. So these statistics here demonstrate some of the huge gaps that remain in our city. And I think really are uh, not an indictment, but almost an indictment of the fact that this diversity that we have and that we're so proud of, we have not yet figured out how to deploy. We've not yet figured out how to activate in a way that is meaningful for all of Anchorage's residents. So if you just look at the disparities here, you know, last month uh, um, or in September, the unemployment rates came out and everybody was so happy because Anchorage really has overall a great unemployment rate given the state of the economy, given the fiscal crisis that we're facing. And we really took a lot of pride and a lot of solace in that fact, 5.1%. However, if you disaggregate the data and you look at a neighborhood, one of the neighborhoods that is the most ethnically diverse neighborhoods in the country, all of a sudden the unemployment rates become something that we need to be very, very concerned about. Same with household median income, and these are in 2009 dollars. These were the most recent statistics that I could find. However, I think the point is even if those dollars could be adjusted for today's, um, today's dollars, there's still quite a gap between household median income overall in Anchorage and then again in Mountain View. So these are issues that we all need to be facing and that we all need to be cognizant of and that we all can't get swept up into the, oh yay, we're so diverse and we have such good unemployment rates, right? We all need to be concerned about the well-being of all of Anchorage's residents. So how do we do that? How do we create our collective impact? One of the ways is that we work on a neighborhood by neighborhood basis. We've got some amazing community-based organizations out there. This slide is, was given to me by the, Mount, uh, the Anchorage Community Land Trust, which is a neighborhood organization in Mountain View. And Mountain View has been a really self-sufficient, self-guided, self-determined part of our community. Um, they take these statistics, the low rates of uh, income compared to the rest of the city, the high rates of unemployment compared to the rest of the city, and they're really trying to make meaningful steps in neighborhood planning to increase the resilience of the folks who live in those communities in that neighborhood. So this is just one example of one neighborhood in our city who's taking really incredible steps to address some of these gaps. And then as Judy mentioned, um, the city, the municipality has joined, joined a few years ago this organization called Welcoming America and we've launched our own project called Welcoming Anchorage, which a lot of you here in the room have been participating in. And that project is to improve uh, the ability of Anchorage to integrate and fully engage all of Anchorage's residents. So nationwide, this organization is devoted to really integrating immigrants and refugees. We've kind of taken that idea and morphed it to reflect the true character of who we as Alaskans are. So we're also including First Alaskans, the indigenous community at the table, the LGBT community, in addition to working with immigrants and refugees. So we know that our collective impact is created by working together on both a neighborhood level on a city level and on a statewide level. And I wanted to just offer you my vision for Anchorage and for what we can become. And I really truly hope that in the next few years we can all come together 
work together to really dissolve some of the obstacles that exist to integrating all of, the, uh, all of Anchorage's residents so that we can tear down barriers to economics, to participating in our markets, we can tear down language barriers, we can tear down barriers that prevent people from accessing our justice system. This includes doing things like providing language access, making sure that those 100 languages that we speak in our schools can survive and thrive and that people who speak those languages will have just as much access to our city services as people who, for whom English is a first language. So paying attention to all of those things, always looking out for each other, that's the vision that I see for Anchorage. And I think about the words of one of my favorite poets who is an award-winning poet and a civil rights activist, Nikki Giovanni. And she came up to the University of Alaska when I first got to Alaska 30-something years ago. Um, and she spoke, she was, she was at the University of Alaska Fairbanks to speak about civil rights and to read some of her poems. And what she said really struck me. She said, you here on the last frontier, you have an opportunity to do things right. We still, 30 years later, have that opportunity to do things right. We just need to be mindful. The other person that I recently got to hear speak about the power of cities was Secretary of, De of State John Kerry. And he was revisiting a quote that um, Justice Brandeis had talked about in terms of cities being a laboratory of democracy. And John Kerry said, yes, that's great, but cities can also be a laboratory of leadership. And he said, more and more, our cities are uniquely positioned to experiment with bold new ideas in all kinds of policy arenas. And I hope that that incentive really speaks to all of you in this audience who are all part of the university system in some way, whether you're a student or a professor or a community member who's here to engage. These, that idea that we can create bold new policy ideas is something that we can all take up. It's something that we can all commit to. We know that here on the northern edge, we can be on the cutting edge. We can be on the cutting edge of entrepreneurial innovation, of economic inclusion, and of social justice. And we also know that because we're such a young state, our own personal histories become the history of our state. We are intimately involved and tied to both our past and our future in ways that people in older states or in states with more populations are not. We have such unique attributes and we are so integrally related with one another. And we know that our future depends on each and every one of us. And so I'm very excited to be here with you this morning to share my thoughts and my vision for where we wanna be as a city. And I'm really excited about this conference and I wish you all the best and thank you for letting me talk to you today.